thank you for your patience. Um, I uh, really appreciate giving me the opportunity to in introduce our wines from Coonawarra, South Australia. Uh, we were in the marketplace here in Australia, of, from Australia in the United States until about 2006. And at that time, the Australian dollar changed in the exchange rate dramatically. And now it's taken in the economic cycle about 10 years for the reversal to apply. So people who will be distributing our wines will be picking up between 25 and 30% margins. And that's just because of the exchange rate. Now I'll move through these slides fairly quickly. And uh, as I go, I'll just make a bit of an explanation and also a little bit of educational information. Um, as you know, between 30 and 50 degrees latitude is the general area for growing wines in the world. And because of that, you can see the green areas there on the, on the uh, map. And basically, this line has been very uh, dramatically influenced because of the weather. But with weather changing, we're seeing new regions occur and old regions kind of fade because of their ability to ripen the grapes. And this is the international system that's set up. And I'll be going through these fairly quickly. So of course, on labels, except for the French labels, we have basically uh, at, the, at the very top, of course, the country. And as we move through, you can see the Australian government, we've been on this property 30 years running the vineyard organically. And uh, Wine Australia has picked up on the significance of what we've done. It's a very small operation. It's a single vineyard. And of course, you can see they put this on their publication about designing labels for export. So every wine company in the country has to follow the guidelines. And my wife said to me, did they ask our permission to put our sign on their label? And I said, no, obviously. So you can see uh, moving from the country, which is Australia to a geographical area. And one of the things that people throughout the world are very interested in, and the wine buyers getting more and more attuned to what's going on, is you can see here in Australia, the, the geographical line for the southeast of Australia, which can be put on the label, means all of this area below the line. So it can include the states of Queensland, New South Wales, Victoria, and South Australia. And the thing that's interesting is, is that the consumer is getting more and more interested in the place. Where is the place that the grapes are grown? And of course, because of this, the value of the wines dramatically increases. So as we see, again, country, geographical area, state, and then the zone. And interestingly, if you look at the bottom of our, of our label, it is the zone which is called, in this case, the limestone coast. And it's a replication of the coastline. And this is always a good story for people who are uh, serving the wine and, and especially upmarket restaurants. Because the more stories they have to tell, that they can remember and have as a guide the label, it affords them an opportunity to become a little more close to the consumer who's actually consuming the wine. Uh, I heard some of the other presenters saying about who their labels were designed by. This was designed by my wife and my son. My son went on to win an Academy Award for Avatar. So again, we move on. We've now seen the zone, and now we're in the region. This is the region of Kunawara. And you can see it's 14 kilometers long, which is about eight miles. And the width, you can see, is about a quarter of a mile. Bordeaux is 90 kilometers, which is about 55 miles long. 
Now, you and I both know that the Grand Cru, which represent the real promotion for Bordeaux, is a very, very limited number of properties. And a lot of these chateaus buy grapes in from a number of very small wineries or, or producers, and they, in turn, keep in an excellent well the reputation of the French region of Bordeaux moving forward. So again, to keep in mind about Kunawara, you're going to hear more and more about this region, and you'll see why. On this map, this is High Bank. We are right in the middle of this region. Every major wine company in the world is in this region. And people ask me, because we have accommodation with people moving through quite readily, they ask me, they say, why, uh, why are all these big companies here? Constellation brand, the largest Spanish, uh, the largest French. Why are they in Kunawar? And the reason is, not only do we have a tremendous terroir, but we also have a tremendous source of water, reliable water in a very, very dry continent. These are the statistics of Chinese buying chateaus in Bordeaux. And you can see here, this is an example of international purchases of wine in the Napa Valley. And going back one here, if I can get this to come back. This is the purchase by a Hong Kong consortium of a large property in Kunawara. And most of these in Kunawara are very recent. Uh, within the last year. Uh, this is a brand that I know that you've heard of. Within the last month, Treasury Wines, the largest in Australia, its value has doubled in one year. It is now almost $7 billion in value. They had until last month 93 brands. They rationalized 30 of them. And now in Kunawara, there are only three there is uh, Wins Kunawara, which is just beginning to be marketed here in, in uh, the United States. Lindemans, which has been here for several decades. And then the one that you probably heard the most of, which is Penfold. This company owns about 65% of Kunawara. And this is the range of products that Penfolds is moving forward in the world market because of the quality of grapes that can be produced in this small region. You can see bin 60, $1,000 a bottle, that sold out in one month. The Grange, I'm sure most of you have heard of. Bin 707, a straight Cabernet, $450 a bottle. Bin 169, and I'll be presenting to you the second wine this afternoon, which is a straight Cabernet. Our Cabernet is at $400 a bottle in China. And again, we sell it in Australia at $90 a bottle. And of course, when you work the margins back, you can get an idea about what you would be able to buy the wines for and sell it at a very successful price point. And then finally, one, 128. So again, the international system moves back finally especially in light of Penfolds to the region, Kunawara, and also to the vineyard. And you can see at the very bottom of the list there, High Bank is a single vineyard wine. This is an example of uh, one of our accommodations. Uh, on our website, which is on my business card, we have a booking calendar, and hopefully you can come down for a very romantic getaway. Uh, you can see where our name came from. When we registered it 30 years ago, they would not allow us to register the name Bank. So we had to push the two words together and call it High Bank, which was in a cool climate viticultural setting. And basically what it was was a situation where the very finest wines were produced on this bank of land in the middle of Kunawara a very, very restricted area of terroir. You can see we produce a number of different uh, size bottles. We go up to nine liters for some of the Asian markets. And this is the wine that you have in front of you, the first wine that was poured, which uh, Robert Parker uh, compared to uh, 
Lynch Baj and Louisville Lascaux. Both of those are anywhere from, depending on the vintage, $350 to $700 a bottle. And you're going to be able to purchase for export around $25 US. And then, of course, with the margins and all, you'll be able to develop from there. On our labels, they're very informative. This is one of the successes of Australia. They are a legal document. Every wine that leaves the country has to be thoroughly scrutinized. It has to be analyzed in laboratories. And any information that we print on the label has to be authenticated. And we have to also have the records. So because of this, it's given us that authenticity, especially in Asia. The other wine that she is pouring now is a straight Cabernet. Uh, the vintage that you have in front of you is the 2013. The 2009 that I was going to pour, unfortunately, disappeared. That one case, so. But the alcohol level is uh, 14 instead of the 13 that is uh, 13 and a half that's on the 14. But again, it's an incredibly iconic wine. Very, very highly uh, reviewed. On those sheets, you see a gentleman by the name of Andrew Kayard. He's responsible for the uh, internationally awarded documentary called The Red Obsession. And The Red Obsession, of course, talked about, again, the Chinese investors in Bordeaux. Uh, he is also the most important wine buyer in the country of Australia. He supplies 240 Dan Murphy stores that are owned by Woolworths. And he approached us and said, look, we'll buy your entire production. And of course, as a small producer, the last thing we would want to do is to have a major like that controlling our brand. So here we are back in the US trying to get some good support from state distributors around the country. And again, you can see at the bottom there, it's only between 250 and 756 bottle cases. That's the annual production. And if we go back to the other, you can see the first wine you tried is between 2,000 and 1,500 12 bottle cartons. So I'm here pitching a legitimate boutique wine. If you go on our website, we've had tremendous reviews, first of all, by Robert Parker himself before he took off on the Barossa. We were one of the few that he reviewed as far as the Cabernet. And this is his follow-on, uh, Neil Martin. I did a master class for uh, Robert in Singapore, again, showing High Bank against some great wines of the world. And I might mention for those that are marketing wines, one of the things that's very successful is to have top Cabernets from around the world, put them in brackets before your clients, either by the glass or by the bottle on the table you will quadruple the amount of wine that you sell because your customers will be very, very interested in looking at Cabernets from different parts of the world. And High Bank has, we, since we've been out of this market, we have exported to 10 world country locations. So again, here's a review by the top wine writer out of Sydney. He included us in his uh, book, which is basically the future of winemaking. We're noted for uh, having high quality. We're in the top 100 restaurants in Australia. And this includes uh, restaurants that we were in here. We were in the Windows in the World as an example, Masa, um, any number of, of uh, different properties here. Um, I was a lecturer for both of the major universities in Australia, and that's one of the reasons why we have stayed in the country 30 years. I have more than 600 graduates who either own or manage vineyards in Australia. And of course, it's wonderful that we have our own property. Again, the grapes are hand pruned. We do green pruning to maintain the style of wine, drop the grapes on the ground, hand picking, of course. Uh, we've always run the vineyard organically. 
The labels that we have on the wines that we will bring to the states can be totally customized for the distributor with the distributor's names on it. Any other uh, additions or subtractions that might be necessary. We've won the state award for a clean and green environment. And again, going back, uh, we have the highest quality bottles, corks, packaging, all of that, and it can be customized to our distributor's needs. So we have left the wine stock that we have available unlabeled. It has the very top quality cork, and then basically we would go from there. You can see, again, low yields, the finest of French oak. The difference between the Kunawar that you tasted first and the second is that the first wine is one-year-old, two-year-old, and new oak, one-third, 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 and it's in closed fermenters. Everything is hand pruned. The family reserve, the second wine that you tried, is in all new oak and it's in open fermenters. And again, everything is minimally uh, filtered. And this is just one of the views from our accommodation. So if you have any questions, I'll be happy to, uh, to answer them. I'm in uh, table 163 and there's an elevator. You don't have to climb the steps. And the chocolate is usually a nice complement to some great Cabernet, so enjoy. Thank you.